Um, we are very honored um, to have somebody from Europe, uh, and especially from the core of uh, Europe, uh, visiting us. And, uh, you know, a big welcome to Dr. Sandra Detzer. Um, it really is her first time uh, in Japan, and amazingly, she's actually spending five entire days of meetings to learn um, about what Japan is doing and perhaps what Germany, what Europe can actually learn from Japan. So we're very much looking forward uh, to learning from you about what is going on in Europe. Now, Dr. Sandra Detzer is uh, one of the leading members of the German Green Party. Um, her district um, is from Ludwigsburg, is that correct? Absolutely. Ludwigsburg is in Baden-Württemberg, uh, which is kind of the Nagoya of Germany. Uh, that's where all the car companies are. That's where uh, Daimler-Benz is. That is where Stuttgart is. And amazingly, Baden-Württemberg, sort of a stronghold of German traditional industry, actually has been ruled by the Green Party for more than a decade. Um, and actually, the leadership of the Green Party, um, you know, there is one of the most popular, both from the voters as well as from German industry. The Green Party there gets things done, uh, which maybe is something we cannot always say about a lot of governments uh, these days. Um, your district also, Ludwigsburg, um, uh, your assistant Georg told me, um, was uh, where Napoleon launched his invasion, um, his uh, invasion on Russia. Uh, so maybe that's also timely, uh, given this uh, unfortunate circumstances that we're in right now. But without further ado, um, Sandra, um, the floor is yours. Please tell us what's going on, what's on your mind, uh, what should we know? Thank you. Thank you so much, Jasper, for this polite uh, invitement and the words uh, introduction. Hello to everyone here and online. Great pleasure for me to be here. Um, it's amazing to be in Japan, but also here with your uh, society to talk about some issues that we, um, yeah, we uh, might be concerned together. Um, and uh, to be honest, um, it's um, yeah, perfect uh, that you actually were the first person that I met in Japan. So I couldn't have any better introduction to this country and uh, to, the, to the whole uh, uh, journey. So thank you very much uh, again. Well, you asked me um, to, to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Green Party and the situation in Germany and Europe and uh, what uh, all this has to do with Japan. <laughs> so um, uh, maybe I start from the beginning uh, from, from a green perspective. So, um, and the first thing I have to say is um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always a little bit um, yeah, uh, lucky um, and, um, to, to, to have uh, such a conversation as we have today, because uh, it was not usual uh, that uh, people listened to the Green Party, <laughs> and um, uh, it took us 40 years uh, to be heard and uh, to be seen also in, 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 uh, in society. And um, uh, for uh, the, the meaning of the Green Party in Germany, um, uh, Fukushima was a really uh, important event, because um, uh, up then, in 2011, uh, the election in Baden-Württemberg, my region, uh, uh, took place. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were a lot of things uh, people were dissatisfied uh, about. But uh, they were also not um, uh, yeah, satisfied uh, with uh, the old conservative government. And then this um, uh, catastrophe happened. And uh, that was a, 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 a special moment in time. Um, when a lot of things changed and people to decide, yes, we want to have another energy policy, we want mm -hmm. to change things uh, also in, in, in Germany, and they voted for the Green Party. Um, uh, it was 24% uh, 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 over then. And, um, we, we had the, the possibility to have the first green prime minister in the southwest, which is actually, as you mentioned, a very strong industrial state. Mm. So it was not uh, like um, it, it didn't um, it surprised people. Yeah, and um, it was. Uh, I have to uh, have a, a funny story uh, because when uh, the prime minister uh, then um, Kretschmann uh, took office, 
the Bavarian Prime Minister from the Conservative government invited um, the enterprises to come to Bavaria because now obviously Baden-Württemberg will be a green government and they uh, have had the fear uh, that we will harm uh, the economy uh, so all the people that uh, still wanted to do business should come to Bavaria. Fortunately uh, this didn't happen. <laughs> the Southwest is still um, a very uh, vivid um, economic um, uh, place. And um, well, um, up um, from, from 2011, you can say the Green Party grew more and more. Um, we, for example, doubled our members uh, from uh, 2009 to uh, now, to 2022, wow. uh, which is unusual because normally you say um, parties lose members and get uh, smaller. And for the Green Party, it's the other way around. Mm. And we are um, a part of governments in uh, 11 um, regional governments right now in Germany. As you know, we have 16 states in uh, general. It's a federal system. And uh, to be in 11 governments out of 16, I think this is quite an, um, it's a number uh, that shows uh, that the Southwest is not an exception anymore, you can say. Um, but uh, obviously, we are the biggest uh, green um, regional party. So, um, what, uh, what, what, what are we um, doing, basically? Um, um, the, the Green Party's major aim um, uh, consists of, of uh, two pillars, when you mm. want to, uh, to call it like this. Um, uh, the first is to combine um, economy and ecology. Um, to bring together the way we are um, yeah, making business um, without uh, harming the planet and mm. without destroying the environment. And so far, uh, we are not very good in doing that because, mm. um, as you know, um, we need the Earth uh, three times uh, to, for the living that we have right now. Um, so we need too much natural resources. And the second pillar um, of what we are doing, uh, what is important to us as a Green Party, um, has to, to um, foster the liberal society so mm. that every individual can have um, its own life um, in a, a very strong civic society. So we think of both a strong individual but a strong society in general. Um, that is important, and um, some people say that we are the most progressive uh, party uh, in, in, in Germany when it comes to the mm. um, like things um, uh, we want to have in the future. Mm. Because, um, as you all know, societies are changing very fast. Uh, we have, through the globalization, through economic uh, transformation, there is a lot of change. And uh, some people um, uh, are not very comfortable with this change. Uh, so uh, we try to offer them kind of answers, uh, what we can um, do to really cope with the change uh, well and, and to have a good future. So um, what, we, um, what uh, is the situation right now? Um, um, you might uh, know that there were federal elections um, last September um, in Germany, and we had a change uh, of government um, over there. Um, Angela Merkel, um, who is really a very famous leader, I would say, uh, throughout the world, um, uh, led the conservative government for the last 16 years. Uh, which is, for Germany, it's a pretty long time. Um, for mm. Japanese politics, it's, uh, but yeah, maybe <laughs> uh, you have to decide that. <laughs> um, uh, your, your, your governments um, maybe also, um, uh, yeah, uh, survive um, um, such a long, long uh, time. Um, but uh, in Germany, there was a kind of feeling that we should um, change a couple of things um, in government. And um, you, you said this uh, very, very kindly. Um, uh, people expected that governments um, have to get things done. Mm. And um, some people had the feeling that the old government 
um, didn't get things done so well. Um, we talked a lot about um, energy politics. Uh, we talked about public transport, for example. We would love to have such a great public transport system as you have in Tokyo, for example, the best in the world. Um, uh, our train uh, system still suffers from de-investments mm. um, during the last years. Uh, so it's uh, pretty, pretty difficult at the moment um, in, um, in a country that loves uh, technology <laughs> uh, to get from A to B uh, uh, just in time. And this is um, something that um, most people are uh, discomfortable discomf with. And um, so um, we tried to uh, do something new. We called it uh, Aufbruch, um, which means um, um, kind of a new movement um, to make clear that uh, we want to do things differently mm. from before. Mm. We now have a free coalition government, and that is a start from the, from the new movement, because it's new. Um, in the past, we had governments um, yeah, formed out of two, coal uh, two coalition partners, and now we have three, and um, it's uh, the Social Democratic Party as the strongest party, the Liberal Party, and the Green Party. Um, and uh, we call it uh, the traffic light <laughs> coalition <laughs> because it's red, uh, it's um, yellow, and it's green. So uh, we hope for that uh, the green is a little bit stronger than the rest because green means going, <laughs> means movement, means forward. Um, so we work uh, um, hard to, to, to have this, um, uh, this movement forward. Um, the, the Green Party... Um, um, has um, yeah the very uh, nice uh, situation that um, four uh, no three out of five um, uh, ministers um, uh, that are the most popular mm. at the moment in Germany um, are from the Green Party and um, um, in this group uh, belongs the um, Minister for Economic and Climate uh, Robert Habeck. Um, and our uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Annalena Baerbock, mm. um, which uh, led the campaign. Mm. Uh, um, and uh, they are doing a really good job um, uh, right now to represent uh, the Green Party, make sure that when we are in government, also in the federal government, it's not a revolution. Mm. We do not do everything uh, differently from before. But we're moving forward. Mm. We talk about the things that are important to us, to the society, and we really do change things. And um, I think the most um, yeah, important expression um, of, of this kind of forward movement right now um, is uh, the energy transformation uh, that we're doing right now in Germany. Um, as you all, all know, uh, the horrible uh, war in the Ukraine um, uh, let um, the, it 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 uh, just um, um, yeah crashed into the reality in Europe. Mm. Uh, we all believe that uh, the freedom and 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 uh, and um, um, the, the peace um, basically that we have over the past decades mm. uh, was a kind of normality. And um, we had to learn um, very hard that this is not the case. And especially Germany um, relied heavily uh, on uh, the assumption that we, ha we will have peace forever because uh, mm -hmm. we um, had uh, high import, quotes, uh, import uh, quotas for gas and oil from Russia. Um, uh, Germany's uh, energy um, relied to 55% um, on Russian gas. And that was a kind of business model, especially mm. for the um, chemistry, uh, for the, for the uh, chemical, uh, chemical industry. industry. Uh, BASF, uh, which is uh, the biggest one you might know, um, they had the direct lines from Siberia uh, to Ludwigshafen, which is in, uh, in the southwest as well. Um, and uh, there was a kind of cooperation that lasts uh, for, for years. Yeah. Uh, and um, many of uh, us thought that this will go on forever. So now we have the uh, necessity to uh, reduce 
um, the um, uh, imports of, uh, from Russia, um, of course, and to diversify uh, the sources of our energy. Um, but then, of course, in general, um, try to be more sovereign and to be more capable uh, of supplying uh, the energy you need um, like uh, in your own responsibility. And this means, especially for the Green Party, uh, to foster uh, the energy transformation um, into a fossil-free future. Um, and this might um, uh, sound a little bit um, weird <laughs> to the ears, especially of, of some international um, spectators, but uh, we always say that um, the sun uh, does not send you a bill. Mm. Um, we, we, we assume that um, you have, uh, 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 like the, the, the natural um, resources do provide us um, with um, uh, clear, um, with um, um, yeah, uh, the energy um, that we need, but we have to, and we have all the technology uh, to do this. We have batteries, uh, we have the, the, the uh, solar panels, we have the windmills, um, we also have um, the warmth of the earth. Um, we, can, we can use a lot of resources, but um, in the past it was cheaper to use gas and oil. Um, so uh, the main idea um, not only in Germany but also in Europe is um, to have a proper emission price to make markets work towards renewable energies. So, and this is what we uh, uh, really uh, foster in the Ministry um, of uh, Economic Affairs. Uh, Mr. Habeck is really um, working very hard on that. We um, ri raise, uh, raise uh, the quotas of um, renewable energies um, that, are, um, yeah, that we uh, look for mm. so that uh, enterprises <coughs> can invest uh, into these energies. Um, we, we also um, make um, uh, clear that we, um, in the European Union, want to further reduce uh, the emissions um, in general. Uh, for example, when you look to the um, uh, cement mm. industry, right. uh, concrete, is this, right? Is this uh, cement industries? Yeah. Um, you have a lot of emissions uh, that are um, used over there. So we try to help them to use hydrogen mm. um, to, um, yeah, uh, to use uh, the, the the big ovens that they need. Um, and it's all. Um, after all, uh, we think we have the technology, we have knowledge to do this, and. Um, now we have to really yeah, come to the point and make it and fix it and have um, yeah, uh, the infrastructure that we need um, to use mm -hmm. this uh, energy because it is, it is uh, after all, it is um, then uh, good for the environment and it's good for the economy. Mm -hmm. That's our kind of light build, mm -hmm. um, the, yeah, the, the picture that we follow. Um, so. um, Maybe um, let's. Um, uh, maybe I, I should talk um, also a little bit about um, uh, how this fits into the European, um, mm. like the German policy fits into uh, the European picture, um, uh, after all. Um, and I think uh, it is um, also um, when it comes to, to Germany within Europe and also the cooperation with France, for example, we talked about this uh, um, before, before uh, our talk here. Um, uh, it is a new situation right mm. now in Europe. It's really a Zeitenwende, uh, we call it in German. That means a turnaround in times. Right. It's a new time right, right now. Um, because as I said, we expected peace to last forever. And now we see that we are in a kind of um, new phase where we have to um, realize uh, that there are still imperialistic uh, powers um, close to Europe and that we have to prepare to cope with them. Um, before, um, in Europe, there was a kind of, um, yeah, the... the um, the picture was when we trade with other countries, we come close to each other. 
um, we we kind of approach each other through uh, uh, doing business with each other. Uh, but obviously, this came to an end mm. a little bit because uh, we did not succeed in um, yeah uh, keeping Russia within the democratic uh, family um, and. Um, uh, it is. Um, it's. It's. It's hard to, to realize that. And um, but uh, this means that um, right now Europe is coming closer together again. Mm. Um, in the in the past, uh, we saw that um, countries like Hungary, like Poland, um, uh, we had a lot of struggles with each other about the right way. Uh, of, of doing things, mm. and these struggles didn't appear, uh, this uh, didn't disappear, but they kind of uh, became a little bit smaller um, uh, in um, uh, yeah in front of uh, the geopolitical changes. Mm -hmm. So I would say that um, this is a special moment in time for Europe because um, we are um, getting closer together again and um, really working hard on finding a common answers to this new geopolitical um, mm -hmm. situation. And um, of course, in the, in the heart of this um, common focus again, is to be a strong economic power in the mm. future because we know that um, Europe has 500, uh, 500 million people. We are a big market, um, so uh, if we when we could um, uh, succeed in uh, doing, uh, yeah, getting our things done mm. <laughs> when it comes to um, the transformation of the economy into a climate neutral economy, uh, when um, we. Uh, achieve uh, things um, uh, in in, in uh, doing, for example, the energy mm -hmm. um, yeah policy together. Uh, when we um, when we achieved to have a common trade policy with other countries, especially uh, Japan, um, the, we could uh, set the standards uh, mm. like worldwide with our partners. Uh, with the US, uh, with Australia, and others. Um, so this is a kind of new mindset that is maybe um, occurring at the horizon in mm. Europe, uh, that we want to clo um, really work close together, closer together, mm. uh, together um, uh, again, and to really um, appreciate uh, what we had uh, during this, uh, this last years and reach out with our partners to really um, make sure that we have um, the economic strength um, to, um, to, to, to give a clear signal to the non-democratic world, you have to say, we are there. We are there and we stick together and you have to cope with us. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, uh, this is very important and um, uh, for this reason, we are very uh, glad that, uh, for example, the French election that took place um, a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Macron, uh, President Macron, uh, won this mm. election. They now have parliamentary election, like uh, in Japan, <laughs> uh, and um, uh, we are uh, very yeah, curious uh, about the outcome because we know that uh, France, uh, the, the French and the German axis is, is mm. important for mm. um, the promotion of Europe and for um, uh, the, the things we have to do together. And um, uh, this is this is the situation right mm. now. Mm. Yeah, mm. absolutely um, new mm. um, in a sense, but um, with um, yeah a couple of of good um, I think uh, ideas and developments. For example, the growing together of Europe right now. And um, so, especially as a uh, as a Green Party member, we we, we tend to be optimistic. <laughs> we uh, we think um, that um, future doesn't only happen, mm. <laughs> but we can change future uh, when we really work hard and and uh, get our uh, stuff done. And um, so um, uh, we are um, optimistic, although these times are. Uh, really uh, yeah, challenging and mm. demanding, and um, I think we have to uh, to be very um, yeah uh, 
awakened, you mm -hmm. can say, uh, uh, and uh, uh, really have a close um, uh, yeah, look at the things that happen um, so that we can have a good future um, in which our uh, children and grandchildren um, uh, like w would like to, to, to live. Mm. That is the uh, one of the core um, yeah, aspect of green policy, that we do not only make things because of, yeah, we should get things done, mm. but also because our children and grandchildren uh, want to live in a world that is worth living. And um, well, that's it so far from my side. Good. Now I'm looking forward for the discussion. <laughs> um, thanks again for having me here. No, no, thank you very much. And uh, you know, there's, there's uh, I mean, the one thing that's, that's always am amazed me, and this is sort of a big contrast to, to what we've seen here in Japan, that uh, largely because of the Green Party, um, you know, sort of the political participation, uh, the enthusiasm for politics, particularly amongst the younger generation, has actually been kept very much alive, right? And, uh, you know, uh, Sandra mentioned that, uh, you know, the Green Party membership actually doubled, um, you know, and now you're consistently polling, you know, between 10 and 20 percent across Germany. Um, so there is obviously sort of an enthusiasm, right? Uh, an embrace for a brighter future, which particularly here in Japan, I think amongst the younger generation, this mukanshin, right, the sort of apathy vis-a-vis -vis politics is something that's, uh, that's very strong. Now, uh, having said that, um, you know, just um, to sort of poke a little bit uh, into this, um, you know, there's a big shock to Germany. You've got the war, right? Um, and uh, at the same time, you've got uh, inflation. And you've got uh, already some of the highest energy prices amongst the industrial countries. Um, you know, so the challenge is obviously there, and it got sort of, sort of turbocharged, right, uh, uh, by this war. Um, you know, what's your sense when you go to your district, right? Uh, what's the sense of the of the German people? Are they actually prepared? to pay the cost? Are they prepared to go um, and uh, not suffer, but to stick together and uh, you know, to actually cope with this? Because sometimes here in Japan, we get the impression, oh my god, Germany now is sort of in this nutcracker situation, right, where there is pressures from everywhere, and particularly the inflationary pressure, right, um, that that could actually crack you know, sort of the stability of society. Is that, is that, is that something you guys worry about? Mm -hmm. um, yes, we do worry, um, but we uh, think we have a couple of answers um, that could lead the way. Um, so again, uh, we are um, optimistic, and this optimistic feeling is um, also, um, you, can, you can feel it when you talk to the people. Mm. Um, there is both at the moment, um, it's fear and the optimistic sense that we can make something out of it. Mm. Um, inflation is very high at 7% and it comes from gas prices. And um, we um, uh, had a lot of um, we spend a lot of money from the governmental side now to reduce the burdens for um, average people, uh, but we know that we cannot take all the burden from them, mm. of course. You can, uh, for example, we gave uh, 300 euros uh, as an energy uh, yeah, money uh, to, to ease in some of the burden, but when you know that uh, for a, a four um, a member household, uh, the um, energy prices means um, a thousand, maybe, maybe, maybe a thousand euro on additional um, uh, costs. Right. Uh, this is not enough to take away all uh, mm. the burden. So um, uh, this is a problem. But on the other hand, many people say, um, yes, we made this. Um, mistake in the past that to rely too much on the gas imports from Russia. Mm. There was something we shouldn't have done, mm. but it's over now. Mm. So now change it. And there was, um, for example, um, some people uh, in Germany even said, stop the imports right now. Mm. Because we do not want to give Russia additional money 
uh, only because we need their energy. Mm. And it was a tough um, public debate um, whether the Minister of, for Economic Affairs should stop the imports uh, mm. from Russia or not. Mm. And he decided not uh, to uh, stop uh, to, uh, um, um, to stop them uh, because we said we have to harm Russia more than our own economy because it does not make sense mm. to uh, weaken us um, like in a, in a, in a, in a stronger uh, way uh, than, we, uh, than we weaken Russia with the sanctions. Mm. Um, so this is, a, uh, this is a situation that everyone's is my impression sees that we cannot go on um, as we did in the past mm. but you're uh, perfectly right um, it is uh, not very clear when inflation can come down again mm. and what we can really do quickly to reduce energy costs mm -hmm. and this is a, um, uh, the reason why for example the minister launched a so-called Easter package um, to foster renewable energies um, uh, in, a, in, a, in the next uh, month. Right. Because we need to move forward now. It uh, takes now seven years to build a windmill in Germany. Seven and years to build a windmill? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> because we are so good in planning <laughs> and oh, we love to do the details <laughs> we love to do the details very very um, you know um, yeah uh, with, with a great love to details and um, but it's too long uh, right. obviously um, so we, we have to reduce uh, the planning times to be um, more quickly in the processes that we do and um, this is the task that we have now, uh, which is not easy because we, uh, um, we are a federal government. Mm -hmm. So that means that we have several layers of government that love their processes <laughs> and are not, well, they see we have to change something, but someone has to start. Mm. So mm. Um, this is, uh, we are right in this process. And that's why, for example, we say that the last government that didn't do enough mm. because this situation is known uh, for a long time. Mm. It's, it, 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 we, we, we kind of uh, had more and more and more bureaucracy and everyone knew it and everyone complained about it, but no one did something against it. Mm. So uh, we have now the situation that is really for, uh, for the national security and for the national uh, purpose. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's, it's important to be uh, faster and to get things done. Mm. So, and this is uh, the situation where we are now in, but I, I uh, really share the view that we have to, um, to have to succeed um, in these uh, points, mm. um, uh, in uh, not such a long way, in a, in a, in a um, 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 not somewhere in the future, mm. but quickly, mm. because people are not waiting forever. Yeah. What, what is very interesting is like, because I mean, you know, sort of certainly when I was growing up in Germany way, way back, um, you know, <laughs> the Green Party, there was, there, was, there was a lot of ideology about it. There was a lot of dreaming, right? Um, and what is interesting from listening to your talk and from, uh, you know, sort of observing a little bit, you know, that the Green Party actually has become very pragmatic. Uh, and that there is a can-do attitude, right? You don't lose track uh, of your ideals, right? But you actually, um, you know, deal with the system and you want to, to, uh, uh, to get things done within the system. Now, to switch a little bit, you mentioned Macron. You mentioned uh, Europe um, actually with the now obvious common enemy, as I say, you know, Russia, um, particularly at the periphery having pulled together. Um, you know, France and Germany, um, you know, sort of, you mentioned sort of having, having come together uh, a little bit closer. But just um, to be a little bit specific on energy policy, um, you know, Mr. Macron, um, you know, and obviously with uh, France's, um, you know, idea and view that uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear power is a renewable uh, energy, right, which I understand recently got endorsed to some extent by uh, the European Parliament. 
um, where, where does nuclear come in uh, in the debate on transition uh, uh, energy supply? What's, what's the thinking there? Maybe your personal view, not the party view. <laughs> <laughs> I can give you both if you want. It is, it is true that we um, we experienced different national energy policies um, in the past, and this will continue. Um, and um, in the past, we I would I would say uh, we had a, a debate and a discussion. Um, what is the right thing to do? And um, right now, uh, after. Um, uh, Putin um, uh, actually uh, started the war on Ukraine. Um, we still have a debate of um, how energy supply should look like in the future, but we are more uh, polite with each other when it comes to national solutions. Mm -hmm. um, so we are kind of uh, accepting that France is maybe doing it a little bit differently than Germany. Um, um, but of course, we're doing it better. <laughs> so this is a kind of no. Uh, it is not, it is still better, still better, that better you, and more expensive. <laughs> yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but we, which is to prove uh, um, uh, that, that this uh, might 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 work with, uh, better. Um, but uh, and and um, some. Um, some other countries have a different uh, um, energy mixes um, and um, will stick uh, to that. Um, but uh, what is an interesting point, I think, in this debate is when you look at the production costs mm. of um, energy units, of the single energy unit. And um, our argument, um, especially as a Green Party that is anti-nuclear um, uh, since the beginning, was that um, nuclear energy is only um, possible because it's subsidized so mm. hard by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the costs, um, nuclear energy is um, with a 30 cent per unit um, uh, and in, in even more, most of the most expensive energies that we can have. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, for example, wind and solar uh, energy uh, ranges between three and um, seven, eight cent per unit production costs, mm -hmm. which is much cheaper. Um, so it, it is uh, basically also, <clears throat> when it comes to, to medium and long term perspectives, um, we argue that it's also. Um, uh, economic uh, ratio uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to have more uh, renewable energies, but it is true you need a whole system mm. that comes with it. Right. You need the batteries, you need the transport systems, you need the, um, uh, the, the, the coupling of um, the production and the consumption. And, um, but this is possible because we have digitalization. Mm. Um, we will have more electricity Electricity in our lives uh, in the future, uh, mm. because um, uh, we we will more um, we will rely more and more on the digital solutions, mm. and um, so it becomes um, it becomes possible to to have your uh, uh, solar uh, cells uh, on the on the rooftop, and uh, to to fill your battery of your car in the, in the garage. Um, and and uh, these kind of uh, technical solutions are already there, and we argue um, uh, that this is um, it is safe. Mm. When you, for example, look at Russia again and the war over there, we had a lot of um, there was a lot of fear that um, uh, Chernobyl, um, the uh, nuclear uh, power. Um, that exploded uh, in the mm. 1980s, um, uh, that uh, something would happen again over there because now the Russian troops mm. uh, are uh, in there and uh, no one knew uh, what Russia would do mm. uh, because we uh, cannot accept that they act rationally right now. Mm. Um, so it is uh, our uh, nuclear power plants that we did we um, that we yeah, had and that we shut down uh, after uh, after and after right now um, when it comes to to attacks mm -hmm. they were not uh, absolutely safe and and, and Germany is, is uh, highly populated I mean where should the people go 
when something like this happens. Um, it is not. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, no one, no one can tell you um, the answer. So, other countries might cope differently, um, of course. But in our debate, um, there is a high, also public, um, support uh, for for this uh, anti-nuclear uh, policy. But on the other hand, you're perfectly right. Uh, we have to reduce energy costs uh, because of the people, but because also of our uh, economy, um, to, to to keep it uh, compatible, mm. Uh, mm. Um, co competi uh, competitive, competitive, competitive. Yeah. Right yeah. now, I mean, it's it's. Look, I mean, the, the, the technology is progressing, the progr technology is progressing, you know, as we speak, uh, smart grids, you know, yeah. um, you know, now doing away with legacy and legacy systems, uh, you know, sort of is a big problem that, uh, that everybody faces. Um, let me switch, um, you know, the topic a little bit towards um, sort of defense. Um, and you know, um, it was obviously the 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 war, the invasion, um, you know, into the Ukraine was obviously a big slap uh, in the face, um, you know, for sort of German, uh, in particular, maybe even NATO um, sort of policies uh, in general. Um, the you know certainly here in Japan, the big headline was of course that now Germany gets it right that uh, the defense budget uh, is going to be doubled um, and um, can you talk a little bit about sort of the the I mean, we, we, we all understand the necessity, right? Uh, but, you know, number one, how is that sort of perceived again by the people according mm -hmm. to what you can read? Particularly, you're in a very interesting spot because the Green Party obviously is the, the peace party, right? Mm -hmm. But you've come out at least sort of in, in a lot of the press that we read here that the Green Party is actually the most pragmatic uh, in terms of, again, wanting to get things done. Mm -hmm. But talk a little bit um, sort of about this uh, um, you know, how the, the defense establishment, um, you know, how the budget increases, um, you know, how all of that is going to be managed, because mm -hmm. that's obviously something that's very, very relevant mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, you know, for Japan. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it was, um, again, uh, this, uh, the start of the war uh, was a turning point uh, in the discussion. Um, and it made clear that um, we relied too heavily on especially U.S. forces uh, for our security. Mm. So, um, it was um, the hope was again um, that um, during times of peace, um, especially the German, but also in the European army cooperation, mm. it was uh, would be our task to secure peace um, around the world, mm. but not to fight an aggression. Mm -hmm. um, it was like um, to 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 defend your own country was a kind of relict, the idea was a relict from the past. <laughs> who, 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 should, who should attack uh, Europe? So, was the idea. Right. And this, uh, again, uh, changed. We now know uh, that there might, that there are situations where it is necessary to defend your own territory again. Mm. Um, so, for, for the Green Party, um, it is uh, true that the peace movement um, was and still is very, very um, uh, inside the DNA. Yeah. Um, but w w what we um, discuss with our members at the moment uh, is that um, peace um, without weapon, as we call it, uh, we want to have peace without weapon, that was the claim um, 40 years ago, um, it has now changed into uh, give weapons to make it possible that the Ukraine defends itself. Mm. So that um, it, it is kind of the idea is to um, empower Ukraine to uh, defend itself to have then a longer sustainable peace. Mm -hmm. So it is not the way that we wanted it to be. Mm. Of course not. 
Um, we always fought for a strict um, export restriction on weapons mm. uh, and stuff. But we have to realize that there are obviously powers in the world that mm. attack other countries and to keep, um, to, to, to make uh, possible that they survive, we have to um, adapt to the reality and to help them mm. uh, also with weapons. Um, and that is, uh, that is uh, um, yeah, we do it with a very heavy heart, we say. Mm. Um, uh, but we do it, mm. absolutely, because it's necessary and we know that Ukrainians are fighting for our values and our mm. peace too. Mm. So that is the, um, uh, the, the discussion in the Green Party and a lot of Green members, uh, over 70% um, uh, are pro um, the liberation uh, mm. of weapons. Right. Uh, so it's not um, that only uh, the minority of the people in government decided uh, for that uh, way, but it's, um, it's a strong support uh, from the party uh, to go this way. Um, to be honest, uh, when it comes to the, um, uh, the defense uh, the expenditures, um, to be honest, the Chancellor Scholz uh, from the Social Democratic also prized us a little bit mm. when he um, uh, gave a speech in the Bundestag um, uh, right after Russia attacked uh, Ukraine. Um, he said, uh, I will have a, um, a one billion um, uh, budget um, for, expense, uh, for defense expenditures, and then we will have uh, the 2% NATO um, uh, goal, 2% right. um, uh, of uh, GDP um, put in, um, in, in defense um, areas. And we were like, ooh. <laughs> That is a strong <laughs> word. <laughs> so, would have been nice if you have talked to us before you <laughs> to, uh, uh, told it the public. But he is the chancellor after all. Uh, it was a very serious uh, situation. Um, so it was clear that he has had to, to, to show leadership mm. and to go forward and to um, give uh, also uh, as a representative of Germany an answer to this situation. Mm. Um, uh, so, uh, and and um, uh, from the content of his words, um, we are very uh, clear that this is obviously necessary because um, we did raise uh, the defense budget over the years, mm. uh, but there are several things um, that don't work mm. right now. Mm. So we have a lot of um, helicopters that don't fly, a lot of ships um, that don't sail, uh, some, some the guns don't shoot, uh, something like this. Uh, very uh, and all the, um, uh, the the people in the, um, the in the military and uh, wirklich, um, the experts um, they they agree uh, that uh, there is. Uh, a lot uh, to do mm. um, to make the German army really work properly. Again, mm. within the European mm. um, defense cooperation and, mm. and of course then the, 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 the NATO mm. um, uh, cooperation. So our uh, task right now is to ensure that um, Germany is really able um, to give its capacity and its capabilities to build the strong mm. um, defense cooperation within the Western um, mm. alliance. And that is a point that we as a Green Party uh, made very strong um, mm. right now, that um, if we spend so mm. much money on defense, mm. it has to be spent right. Mm -hmm. And right means um, make sure that it is um, uh, compatible with the European mm -hmm. Elias, and that we uh, work within the NATO um, uh, yeah, environment uh, so that we do not get a national um, uh, yeah, super uh, turbo uh, defense uh, expenditure thing, mm -hmm. uh, which is not, uh, which is not uh, helping anyone, mm -hmm. after all. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that is, that is uh, something that is very uh, important to us, mm. uh, that um, uh, we are not only yeah, rising expenditures, 
but um, that we achieve mm. something with mm. this money, and that means thinking European, uh, as it, thinking also within the European um, Alliance yeah. and the NATO. Yeah. yeah. Tell me something, you know, just just out of curiosity, Germany. Um, you know, the, the, as, as you know, Germany switched towards uh, professional. Uh, army, there's no more conscription. Um, it used to be that uh, you know everybody who had turned 18, uh, you know, had to do uh, 18 months or 15 months uh, uh, of service that was abandoned. I forget six, seven, eight years ago. Um, now uh, in Sweden, um, they just released some very interesting data. They've got a professional uh, army as well, and typically they get about 5,000 applicants right per year to join that army. Uh, but since the start of the war, there have been more than 20,000 people mm -hmm. who have applied to serve in the Swedish army. Um, what I'm trying to get to is in Germany. Are you aware? Is you know you, you fine? It's it's nice. You know, we send weapons, you know, but that's, that's important, um, you know, but actually are you prepared to put boots on the ground? Are the people actually prepared to, uh, to fight, um, you know, for their freedoms, uh, for their ideals? And what's your, it's a, it's, it's a difficult question. I don't mean it to be loaded, mm -hmm. but just it's obviously something that there is a worst case scenario that, that you know, hopefully it, it's only going to be a contingency. Mm -hmm. But what's the mood in Germany vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis that? I mean, <coughs> there is a lot um, a long debate uh, about uh, what the German contribution to international security is. Mm. And uh, we are, um, I think, all very clear um, that uh, the, um, the, the, the role um, and that we should play um, should, bigger, should be bigger and, and we should, we should uh, take more responsibility when it comes to international peacekeeping. Mm -hmm. um, it is um, at this moment um, a Zeitenwende, mm. um, a transformation of a new new uh, time, new new beginning. Um, that we support the Ukraine with these weapons mm. um, uh, that we that we give right now, and um, there there has been a shift in the attitude uh, mm -hmm. towards um, in, 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 towards the attitude um, um, yeah in acting uh, right. in these situations um, so I would say we are on a good way when you uh, can say this in the situation mm. because this way obviously is not good but it's what's not our decision so we are um, we are making progress in accepting mm -hmm. this uh, new role and um, this shows, I think, uh, also um, in, in, in this war. Um, but um, we are not in the situation. I mean, there are debates whether we should go back to this uh, regime that we had before, that when you were 18, you go to the army for a year, and, um, mm. uh, and then you, you, um, and you decide whether to continue or not. Uh, but uh, it's only a conservative debate, mm. I would say, right now. Mm. I, I do not see that the whole society really is, mm -hmm. um, uh, is, is concerned with it. Mm. Um, it is, um, when you talk to people, it is really surprising um, how many um, play with the ideas uh, mm -hmm. of uh, kind of going to war to defend your own country. Mm. For example, my father, all of a sudden, we sat on the breakfast table and said, well, um, I, I, the last days I thought about, would I fight to defend my country? And I come to the conclusion I would. Mm. And that is, uh, these kind of debates we hadn't had that, as far as I know, um, before, mm. but they're there uh, right now, and uh, so it's it's uh, it's really a special time uh, right. in Europe. Um, the changes a lot, and um, we will see how, how this debate uh, continues. Right, Zeitwende. Interesting yeah. times. What well, it's a bit more. It's not interesting times in an abstract way. It's very, very concrete because it's um, you know it's less than a thousand miles away. Um, let me open the floor to any questions from uh, from the audience. Dozo. 
<laughs> Good morning, Dr. Zitsa. Thank you for uh, taking my question. I'm Miki Osugana from Nikkei as a former correspondent in uh, uh, Berlin. And then uh, I'm very happy to be here because uh, I, I began to study in a German, in, a, uh, in Germany, uh, in, at Schwäbisch Hall. Uh, ah, it's, uh, it's about and beautiful. Very well. And I covered also in 2011 in, uh, uh, in Germany. I was in Germany and I had an interview with the uh, Baden-Württemberg uh, uh, transportation minister, Mr. Hellman. Okay. Hi. So, <laughs> thanks. <clears throat> and I have a question <clears throat> about uh, your German China politics. Mm. You know. So, uh, things have changed a lot so, since the uh, uh, so Ukraine war and then also the transition of the power in uh, Germany. And uh, uh, Bundeskanzler and Chancellor Scholz chose uh, a destination for the Asian visit as a first visit to Japan, not including China. And then you are spending, you are going to spend five days mm. in, in Japan, it shows that. And you are going to uh, talk about uh, economic security, is right? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, could you explain a bit about uh, your, so what has changed you know, on the German-China policy? from the Merkel's uh, administration, which is led by the so, uh, road group, and then, uh, I'm sorry, sorry <laughs> um, uh, grand coalition, and then to the, this uh, coalition. Thank you. Thank you uh, for, for this very, very um, <clears throat> important question. Um, <clears throat> the short answer would be, um, we haven't um, figured it out uh, completely yet. But you're perfectly true. Um, there are things uh, changing. It was, um, as you said, uh, I think no, um, uh, like uh, not. Um, it was uh, on purpose uh, that uh, the chancellor came to Japan and, and not to China, and um, it is. Again, the war, I would say, uh, that changed things a lot. Um, what do you know in Japan, um, like what you have, have, um, have been knowing for a long time, is that um, non-democratic systems use their economic power um, to foster their own I, goals and, and, and aims and this is something that uh, Europe didn't believe for a long time. We thought, um, as I mentioned before, that when we trade um, with non-democratic systems, we will kind of uh, become more and more alike and uh, after all the differences will appear. <clears throat> but um, since the Russian war, it is clear that um, uh, this is not true and that uh, different systems stay different system. And um, the, the fear uh, is that, that comes uh, from the horizon that China might behave like Russia uh, in, um, in future times and um, that uh, it might use its economic power uh, to uh, kind of um, also uh, change um, uh, democratic society and uh, to, <clears throat> to, to, to use um, it as a, as a vehicle um, uh, to, to implement more of the Russian, uh, of, the, of the Chinese system um, uh, worldwide. And so um, I would say that um, the reason, for example, why I'm, I am here uh, in Japan um, right now is to have a closer look on your economic security law that you just passed um, to make your economy more stable towards uh, shocks, external shocks, and for example, secure that the supply chains uh, do really work uh, properly, even in, in times of crisis. And uh, I think um, you are very ahead of other nations when it comes to this point, because um, in Germany we relied heavily 
uh, on this just-in-time production that you once invented in Japan, um, and, and uh, which is, is, is now had come to a certain end. Um, when you uh, are not sure that the world market is uh, supplying you with all the things you need for your industry. Um, so uh, it is um, becoming, I think I would say, it's becoming more clear to the Germans, but also to the Europeans as well, um, that we cannot just assume that uh, China will always um, be uh, the supplier of the world um, because they're only because they're nice people. <laughs> um, I think it is clear that there might be some costs um, and uh, that we have to really have a good risk management um, in the way we, um, yeah, we, we we set on our economies to make sure that we are uh, sovereign. Uh, after all. Thank you very much. I'd like to follow up on Ukraine. Um, what do you think should Germany, the EU, NATO do to move to the next step? Because clearly we're not doing enough to ensure Ukrainian victory. Uh, so what more should be done to make sure that victory is swift and diminishes the costs to the Ukrainian people whose cities are now being destroyed? Mm. I think um, it's um, it basically um, it is the right way to um, supply the means that Ukrainians can defend themselves without becoming a war party ourselves. Um, and uh, I think we should make sure that um, the Ukrainians have really the means. And, and the instruments, um, their weapons, after all, um, to to um, yeah, that is a it's a difficult question whether they should win the war, Russia should lose it, but at least I would say to defend what their goals are. Ukrainians set the goals, and we support them to reach them. This is the way um, this is set up, and this is the way it should work. Um, and um, I, I, I don't. I think I have the fear that this will take a lot of time. Um, I, we, we do not expect the war to be over very soon. Um, but um, I don't. Uh, I simply don't know if this means that we should change the strategy. I'm not um, not deep enough into these kind of uh, yeah. Uh, things to know that. All I know is that um, uh, we should make sure that um, the weapons really reach um, yeah, the regions where they are necessary. This is a huge debate in Germany um, right now because um, also some of the European partners say Euro um, Germany is too slow uh, and uh, does not um, deliver uh, enough of the weapons, so it is our um, yeah uh, our task to make sure that uh, we are really delivering. But um, in a way, I think um, as long as it takes, this is the way we should go, because um, it's not uh, no one knows uh, what what would happen. Um, and, and how Putin will react um, when we go beyond this uh, border uh, and really become a war party uh, ourselves. Good. Um, well, not good, but um, yeah, it's terribly, uh, terribly, uh, it's um, terribly difficult. Terrible I think situation. we're all struggling with the fact that no, nobody sees any sort of end game, yeah, right? Um, and you know, whether it's short or long, a war of attrition. I mean, this is this is. Uh, you know, wow. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're in government and not me. Um, there's a couple of questions I think from the from the uh, uh, audience overseas. Right. Uh, we have uh, questions from Sri Lanka, Okinawa, and locally here as well. So uh, we have a, qu a question from um, 
uh, Professor Michito Tsuruoka, uh, Keio University, and he asks, what lessons do you think you should draw on from the war in Ukraine and Germany or Europe's relationship with Russia regarding China? If you say that you should have decreased the level of energy dependence on Russia much earlier, uh, you ask, uh, you also think this is time to start decreasing your dependence on China for solar, so, solar panels, um, for example, before uh, anything serious happens. What's your thought? Um, yes, this is um, absolutely the question. Um, as we as we talked uh, about before, um, uh, we now have um, the terrible situation with Russia. And when it comes to the geopolitical changes that this war uh, initiated, the fear is that Russia is the, the, the elephant behind uh, this kind of behavior. So that uh, what Russia did, China might do as well uh, in other contexts. Uh, and this means, of course, um, to think about um, the um, supply chains uh, that uh, and the imports, um, the exports, um, since China is a much bigger trading partner for Germany, for Europe, um, as it is Russia. Um, so um, I think, for example, when it comes to raw material, um, this is uh, uh, the focus uh, that I have on my journey uh, here in Japan. Um, when it comes to raw materials, uh, lithium, uh, cobalt, uh, rare earth uh, uh, stuff, uh, we know that um, China is uh, having the majority of all exploration uh, sites, mm. uh, that they have a lot of pre-products that we need for digitalization, for the batteries, for, the, um, for our um, way uh, in Germany, uh, away from the fossil economy. Um, so it is true that in the um, situation as it is right now, we depend heavily on um, Chinese uh, products um, and, and activities. And um, this is why the um, Japanese Economic Security Act is so interesting for us right now because it addresses these questions and it tries to find, uh, uh, tries to find answers. Uh, to this. Mm. And I think um, this is the debate we should lead in Germany um, in, in the coming months and years. Um, uh, this would uh, mean to answer the question um, uh, do we want to uh, sell our Mercedes um, uh, in, 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 in China um, as we did in the past? Um, maybe we should have the uh, solar industry um, uh, coming back to Germany in, in a way, because we used to be very strong in these uh, industries um, before uh, they, they mm. went to China because it's cheaper over there. But the second, um, uh, the second generation of um, uh, PV uh, sellers, they are more intelligent. And I talked to a couple of enterprises uh, in Germany, companies in Germany, uh, they want to um, they want to build uh, these new devices and they see a real chance that the industry is coming back to Germany and Europe again. Mm. So um, I think the interesting question um, there is how do we um, kind of um, reshape globalization in a way that can make our economies and the societies more stable and make it less vulnerable. Um, and uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I do not have uh, like the perfect answer how to do it, but I'm looking forward to have the discussions how uh, we can implement these mm. aims. I mean, it's interesting, right? I mean, that, that, that again, this learning from Japan aspect, right? Because, I mean, obviously the dependency, yeah. the nexus, um, you know, particularly to the People's Republic of China, just by the geographic proximity, I mean, such a dense relationship between Japan and uh, the People's Republic of China. Um, yeah, and, and you and, experienced this import stops uh, already, you exactly. know? Um, we thought, uh, well, uh, Russia can never, ever uh, um, attack uh, someone. Now they did. Um, we said, well, no, 
oh, China is fine, we want to trade with each other. You tell us, no, they already stopped mm. importing rare earth uh, mm. because of uh, political reasons. So uh, we, we, we really need to believe in mm. your experience. Uh, and this is the thing I think Germany should do right now, to look at the world and see what uh, lessons can be drawn. Um, I think this is going to be the last question, um, but um, on a lighter note, uh, what are the plans of Germany for electronic vehicles, if you could elaborate on that? EVs. Electric, uh, electric, electric uh, um, um, cars. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, the plan is well <laughs> to, to have more of them. <laughs> so, and um, and uh, the plan is to build them. <laughs> also, um, uh, we we um, it was funny because when um, uh, Kretschmann uh, um, became uh, prime minister, the first green uh, prime minister of the world <laughs> in the southwest, he said. Um, uh, he was he was asked from a journalist um, uh, about his um, attitude towards uh, the automotive industry, and he said uh, the famous sentence: "Less cars." are better than more. Mm -hmm. so, and there was a huge shout out in the Southwest. Oh my God, the Greens are there. They will ruin our country. We cannot believe it. And he had to, he had to say, okay, 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 okay. It didn't mean it like that. It was just that, you know, and now in the meantime, uh, because Mr. Kretschmann is very, very um, reflective, um, uh, very uh, thought, through uh, a man, and, 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 and he thinks a lot uh, about um, uh, how he puts uh, his, his policies. And um, he uh, kind of um, developed um, the, um, the aim, the goal, uh, that we want to, we invented the car, uh, we invented uh, the, um, uh, yeah, Mercedes Benz, uh, as you as you might know, um, uh, and his his wife drove uh, the first kilometers um, uh, in 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 the southwest, um, always. Um, um, yeah, stopping at uh, pharmaceutical mm. points uh, to get the petrol <laughs> <laughs> that you could buy there only per liter. Uh, that was it was a very very uh, interesting time, and we invented the car, and, and now we kind of want to reinvent it um, when it comes to uh, the, the the new. Uh, forms of um, uh, antriebe mm -hmm. uh, of, 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 of what, what did it look uh, uh, of engines engines uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of um, and uh, we know that we are quite late uh, in, in in Germany to um, invent uh, this this kind of things but we are still I think uh, we are still pretty good in constructing cars so um, what I heard from my um, automotive um, the, yeah, companies is um, that they uh, now try to combine the new digital skills, um, the software side, with the old uh, knowledge uh, of building the machine uh, after all. And um, this is um, maybe, uh, I don't know how it will uh, evolve in the future, uh, because uh, Tesla, for example, is, is now building a, a huge factory uh, in the north of Germany. So we take it very seriously that there is a hard competition of um, yeah, uh, companies uh, that want to build the cars of the future. Uh, but the aim is to transform our automotive sector via um, the, the um, electric um, yeah, century uh, uh, to come. And uh, for example, the um, uh, CEO of, uh, of, of Daimler-Benz, um, uh, Kelenius, uh, he said his strategy is electric only uh, right now. So for the German and the in the European market, at least, uh, Benz focuses on having um, EVs, and uh, we are um, making much of effort um, to now build the infrastructure so that you can really charge uh, your car uh, like in a, in, a, in a very comfortable way uh, wherever you go. Um, but again, uh, we know that all the materials that we need to have the EVs 
uh, are the same as you use for normal batteries. Uh, and you have a lot of experience, uh, battery building, hype lighter, uh, uh, stuff, semiconductor uh, industry uh, in Japan. So um, you know that here again, China comes into play. Uh, and that we again have to think about what, where do the materials come from um, that we have in the future cars. And uh, here we are in the debate uh, we had before, uh, that we have to really um, yeah, uh, think uh, of our um, geopolitical uh, strategy uh, to foster trade with democracy, uh, with democracies, to really um, strengthen the ties between our allies, for example, Japan, um, but also the US, Australia, uh, and other countries, and really, um, really, I think we really have to understand that economic power will be used for um, kind of is is um, is necessary to be um, yeah um, to play a role in future um, in a future geopolitical situation um, and this is maybe maybe Germany did not take this seriously enough in the past. We always, uh, I think we had the attitude that we can trade with everyone and just make our business and um, maybe don't think so much of the rest uh, of the implication that has. And I think this situation has changed. No, I mean, fantastic. Um, and I mean, we could go on. Uh, there, there, there are many issues on the table. Specifically um, to that question, um, the new CEO of Volkswagen is a young man in his 40s. And when he took the job, he handed a plate um, that every uh, senior manager has on his desk. And the plate reads, go kill Tesla. Um, <laughs> So I think the competitive spirits, this Aufbruch um, that uh, she was talking about, and I certainly tell my investor friends that at the latest, um, by next year, by 2023, Volkswagen EV will outsell Tesla, um, you know, um, quite significantly. So watch this space, and I don't think that Toyota is going to be far behind. And when you've got the two largest car companies in the world, uh, Volkswagen and Toyota, uh, go going on an all-out attack, um, it's probably good to sh focus your attention more on space exploration rather than on building bad cars. Oh, sorry, Mr. <laughs> Elon Musk. Thank you very, very much, Sandra. This was uh, absolutely excellent.